Hi everyone, welcome to Unreal Specialization Week 3. Um, today's tutorial is themed around the idea of painting the landscape. And it's themed in that way because I was kind of looking back at some of Eugene von Girard's work, um, who's a colonial romanticist, and looking at the way that he depicted landscape um, for my other studio that I'm teaching. And that reminded me of another artist called John Gerard. Sounds very similar to Von Gerard, John Gerard. Um, and he's like a digital, um, a digital landscape artist who does a lot of simulation work. And um, he's most famous for this work, which is called Western Flag. Um, it's kind of a series of works that have this pluming smoke um, flag and it's kind of responding to climate change and Western capitalism's impact on the environment. So I thought today, looking at how these works are sort of put together technically, these were originally done in 2017, so they're getting quite old. Um, and they were created using lots of like photo scans and virtual geometry and then um, renders in Cinema 4D. So all of this stuff would have been rendered out and probably took, you know, days or weeks of render time in 2017. Uh, I don't know who else was trying to render at that time, but it was a slow process. Now something like this is really achievable in real time using Unreal, so I thought it was a good scope for us to aim for. Um, so what I ended up doing was actually feeding some of these images into Midjourney to create some concept art and plugging in some other environmental images. Um, and so this is kind of the concept art that I got out of that process. Um, and so this is going to be sort of what we're aiming for today. Um, we're going to create this sort of landscape environment, bring in some foliage, some water, and then also end with some sort of particle simulation. And I'm going to create a whole new project and take you on that journey from start to finish so that you've got an understanding of the tools you can use to start iterating on and painting your own landscapes. So I'm going to head over to the Epic Launcher and boot up a new project. Okay, so I'm just going into the Games tab here and choosing a blank canvas. Um, for this project, we are going to want the starter content because there's a few basic textures that we might use later for noise or um, the actual particle system later on as well. Um, but we can leave everything else just set to default and we'll start up a new world. And I'm going to immediately ditch this level. So we'll come into our content folder and then set up our folders. So we're going to have our levels. We're going to have our blueprints and we're going to have materials uh, and maybe the rest we can set up later. So we'll go into our levels folder and we will create a new level and we'll call this John Gerard tutorial, something really fun. Um, and we'll open that one up. Um, what I'm going to do straight away as well is go over to my edit project settings. And if we just search default map, then we can choose which map we want to open straight away when we first launch Unreal. Um, so I'm going to actually choose that new level we just created. And we can do the same for our game default map. And that means if we go ahead and build this game, then we're going to have that level loaded straight away. Um, we don't have to go to that weird default world. Cool. Going to dock my project settings and we'll save. So the first thing we want to do, um, as we've done before, is bring in our lighting because uh, we can't see anything at the moment. So we'll go over to our environment light mixer and we will bring in those. Actually, what we should do first, just to get it out of the way, is switch on a few packages that we're going to use shortly. So what I'm going to do is go up to my edit 
and then plugins here. And this will open up what is all of the kind of content that exists in Unreal, but is just hidden in the background because not everyone will use it. Um, and there's lots of useful stuff in here. So I suggest that you go through and have a look in your own time um, because there's heaps of different plugins that might have a beneficial application to your project. Um, but what we're going to use is we're going to grab the land mass tool. So we'll tick that one on and it's going to come up with a warning saying, Hey, this is in beta. Um, that's fine for our purposes. As far as I've used it, it's been pretty stable. It's just a bit fiddly, but I'll show you how to use that today. And you can see it's going to ask us to restart the editor. So we're going to go through and activate everything. And then we've just got one restart to do. So the next one I'm going to bring in is called water. So we'll bring in the water system as well. Yes. And the last one we might use, we might not, um, is called volumetrics, but this will give us a lot of different assets that we can apply in our scene. Um, and if we do get time, we might start creating some fog clouds with those assets as well. So we'll activate the volumetrics and we're going to hit restart now. Um, so just make sure that you do save your level before you hit restart. Otherwise it'll get wiped. Now, while that is also relaunching, we might as well grab an asset that we're going to use and get that downloading. So I'll just show you the Unreal Engine at Marketplace. This is like the asset store in Unity, but it's in the Epic Games launcher. Um, and so there's actually heaps of different free stuff that we can grab here. Um, I wouldn't recommend paying for anything that you're using in a uni assignment, unless you think it's a really good tool that you're going to use many, many times down the road. Um, so we can come over to this free tab here and we can look at just regular content that Epic has released for free. And there's heaps of stuff here. Most of these are going to be like demo projects. Um, but we've also got like meta humans in there. Um, so this is where Epic will put some of the content that they is just too big to be like a plugin, um, that we just tick on in engine so that you have to actually download that content. Um, but what's really cool is there's a free for the month section and in free for the month, there's all these assets that Epic has just sort of bought, um, from the creator of that asset and released it for free for the month. And if you go ahead and buy it, you just have it in your library sort of forever. So I'd make a habit of checking this every month and just picking up stuff that you think might be useful. So you can see I've grabbed this Oak forest asset and this art of shader asset. Um, and I'm going to be checking those out. We might try and use this Oak forest asset today. Um, so yeah, this is a really good place to check out later. Um, and kind of come back to, because you never know when you might need something. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I'll mention is the mega scans section here. And so this has got stuff that isn't in main Quixel bridge like trees. So if you don't have the first trees that I mentioned from the free for the month pack available, just grab one of these mega scan trees and we can use that for the purpose of this tutorial. Um, but there's, yeah, there's heaps of different stuff, like all the quarry scans from their demos, um, that you can go and check out in there. So I'm going to come down here and once you have purchased an asset, even if it's free, it'll get sort of put down in your asset vault here. Um, and this is how much storage these are taking up if they're downloaded. So I'm going to say, add this Oak forest project to my Jean Girard tutorial. And just let that sort of download in the background. Okay, so we're back in Unreal now um, and we've got our lighting imported and we've also imported those plugins and restarted our editor. So we're good to go. Um, the first thing I'll show you is the landscape or what, what's kind of in Unity is like the terrain tool. Um, and this is a level design tool to let you sort of paint out 
more organic or exterior environments where we'd use cube grid for more of your interior blocking out sort of stuff. Um, now what we can do is come up to this mode selector once again, and we'll go to the landscape mode here. And so that's going to pull up this new page for us. And we've also got this big green grid that's appeared and, um, by default, this will appear at a hundred in the sort of vertical axes. Um, I'd suggest leaving it there because all of the other volumes will kind of come in at that height as well. So it's just easier to kind of leave it as standard. I found that out the hard way. Um, but that's pretty much all we need to do. So we could just go ahead and create that landscape and then start painting. Um, you might want to reset your sort of resolution and size here. Um, so you can choose the amount of resolution in each sort of cube by looking at this here. So it's a bit hard to explain without just showing you. So you'll see as I change these values, there's these big green squares and they go up and down in size. So if we actually have smaller sections, say the 31 by 31, um, and then we increase the amount of components. So I might do 16 by 16. Um, then we're going to have a higher res sort of terrain map than if we had a 16 by 16 world that was larger, if that makes sense. So here we're going to have larger space with a higher section size but we're going to have not as much resolution. So I like to keep it at the 31 by 31. Um, and maybe we can make a world that's like, oh, that's kind of the max. Maybe let's do a 24 by 24 sort of chunk world. So that's looking pretty good to me. Um, we'll go ahead and hit create. And now we've got a landscape. So the first thing we might do is just drop in a classic cube for scale. So I'm going to drop in a cube here um, and I'm going to, for one moment, leave landscape mode and just zero out this guy. So is it the world center? Um, and then we'll have to bring it up to a hundred or probably 105 or something, 110. One, two hundred, and sorry, it's six o'clock and I can't do maths, but there we go. The classic E and D key saved us there. Um, so we've got a cube at the center of our world now. Um, and just looking at the size of things, I think it feels pretty appropriate for what we're going for. Um, so we want this kind of sparse look where we're going to have lots of trees in the background. Um, I might change things up and have some more trees in the foreground, but that's kind of what we're going to be going for. Um, and we know we need to have some water coming in at one side as well. So we've got our cube for scale in, and I'm going to just make that a little bit taller. So it's like more of a human height. So if we do two meters tall, um, I'm not two meters tall, but some people might be. Um, so we've got a sort of human scale reference and that will just help us as we design the scale of everything else. So with that in place, what we're going to do is go back to our landscape mode and just make sure that we're selecting our landscape object here in our outliner. And you'll see straight away, I've got this like big brush that's appeared. Um, and if I just click and start drawing, then I'm going to start drawing out some hills and, and mountains here. So we can left click to paint and we can kind of adjust our tool strength here. So we can turn that up and we can paint with a sort of stronger impression. Uh, we can also change our brush size by turning up this value here. So we can paint with a larger brush or we could come in and do some more detailed painting work. Um, and the hotkeys for these 
rely on the square brackets on your keyboard. I'm just going to give us a bit more space. That's a bit better. Um, so if we use the square bracket, the right one, we're going to increase the size and the left one will make that smaller. Um, and then if we hold control while we do that, you can see we're increasing the strength on the left there. So square brackets by themselves are the brush size and then holding down control is the strength. So I'm just going to erase everything I just did there. So we'll just change to our erase tool in the palette and we'll just wipe that out. Slowly, slowly, we might want to increase the scale here. There we go. So we'll start painting out some hills that are a bit closer to us. And um, that's probably a bit too strong. So I might drop down that strength there a little and we'll just start shaping out some things here. Um, if you were going to do this as kind of like the way you were designing your main level, I'd suggest you draw out everything on paper first. Um, so then you have some reference for what you're doing because once you get in with the tools, yes, it is pretty iterative, but it, it helps to have something to work towards. Um, and so maybe we've got like another hill bank over here. Um, do some over here as well. We have these different sort of brush fall offs as well. So if you want something that's a bit more sort of spherical with a bit of a plateau at the top, you can pick some of these different fall offs. This one will be a bit sharper like that. And uh, this one's more of a squared tapered brush um, as well as you can also bring in alpha brushes. So if you had, for example, a height map of a real environment, you could create an alpha brush with that and use it to sort of stamp the environment. Um, but we'll just use these sort of standard brush today and we'll, we'll start shaping things out. Um, I'm going to go over to our smooth tool as well and just even things out a little bit. So we'll start blending that stuff back in. And then we might want to create a bit of noise on our surfaces here as well. Um, so we could hold down shift to invert this so it'll kind of depress away from us and just create a bit of irregularity in that surface that we've got happening. And we can do that on all the mountains as well. So they're just not quite so flat and you can't see the brush as much. So we're just disguising things a bit. And of course, this will start to look a bit different when we introduce a material as well. Um, but this is looking a bit sort of homogenous, so we'll smooth that out. Um, something like that. And for this environment, we're going to actually work with like a fixed perspective, as in with these John Gerards. Um, so we're going to be sort of developing everything for a single viewpoint. But obviously you could spend a bit more time getting things to look correct if you're going for like a like a um, explorable 3D environment. Cool. So we've started to use these tools and um, I think these are pretty self-explanatory. So you can just click through and have a go. Um, so like a flatten brush will sample what you click on the average and then it will flatten out to that point. Um, we've got ramp brushes, which will create these like bridges, I guess, actually, yeah, add ramp. Yeah, so that all kind of flatten from A to B. So that's an interesting one. I actually had never clicked on that before, but um, <laughs> that's kind of useful, I guess. Yeah, you could use that. Maybe you could make a dam. Um, so that's like the ramp brush. Uh, you've got these simulations as well of like hydro and erosion. Um, I'm not really sure how these ones work exactly. Looks like it's sort of creating these depressions where rain would fall from down of one of these slopes. Um, but I tend to use these tools just to kind of get a vague shape happening. 
and then layering in more of the other Quixel 3D assets to bring out like the more complex geometry, as well as using the landmass tool to create some background geometry, which we'll do in just a sec. Okay, so we've got this sparse valley happening here with our terrain tool. Um, now I think this is gonna be the sort of perspective I want to design from. So if you found a good looking point, and you can do a few and compare them, um, but I, I'm liking this sort of perspective here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold control and click the one key on my keyboard, so control one. And what that's done is save that perspective. So if I press one again, it just snaps me back to that exact point. And you can save a few, so we could have one that's a bit further away like this, so you get more of the context of the scene, and that could be two. And um, maybe we have like a really, I don't know, it's hard to know what's gonna be useful right now because <laughs> we haven't got much yet. Um, but we could do this as control three, and then we could sort of just use our arrow keys to snap between these different looks. Um, so that's quite handy, especially if you're designing something for more of like a cinematic or a fixed perspective render rather than an explorable environment. Although you could still use it and just have a few select areas of interest that you're designing for. So the next thing we're gonna use is a really good iterative tool for creating mountains like these. Um, where you don't have to rely on just sculpting and you can kind of move them around as you would other game objects. So it's quite a nice tool to be quick in your terrain and environment development. And that's called the landmass tool. So we've already gone ahead and enabled the landmass tool. You won't actually find it unless you go to your plugins and enable landmass and switch that on. But once you've done that, we can go to our blueprint brush here and we've got this setting for other blueprint brushes. You can see there's a few that are in here already, um, but the one we wanna pick is called Custom Brush Landmass. So we'll select that one, and we might fly over to the distance here, and we're just going to click. And what we're gonna get when it loads up in a sec, it's just preparing some shaders, is we're gonna get this baby mountain and what I'm gonna do is first press the R key and we'll just scale that one up so it's a bit bigger. So that's looking better. Um, you'll notice here the vertical height doesn't do anything. We'll control that with another setting. And I'm just seeing how that's positioned. That's pretty good. And so what this is, is like a spline tool that lets us deform the terrain that we've already painted. Um, and we've got these different points here. So if we click on this corner here, you can see I've selected that point. Um, and what we can actually do is hold down Alt to duplicate that point and just drag it out. And now you can see how it's kind of a spline being put together. So we've just added another point to that loop and we can grab these handles here. They're a little bit hard to see. I'm not sure if it's coming through on the recording, um, but we can grab the handles and we can start to move those around as well. So it doesn't look like the handles are working for me, but your mileage may vary. Um, it is a beta tool, so I haven't really experienced that before. Um, it might be working totally fine on your machine. I'm not sure. But regardless of that, we're able to kind of reshape this landmass in the way we want. And just creating a few points, we've now got something that's not just a big pyramid, it's actually got a little bit more shape to it. So if we return to our keyboard, now we've got this mountain. Um, and so the nice thing about this is we can grab the whole landscape by selecting it here, and we can just sort of move this around um, and if we move it over our terrain that we've already sculpted, currently it's going to kind of depress and push that away and create these blending zones. 
Um, but we can start changing some of that behavior in our detail panel here. Um, and I'm going to press auto spline tangents. Let's see how that goes. Um, so you can see that we've got a few blend options here. So we could maybe change this to an additive blend. And now you can see that it's actually picking up the deformation from the landscape that was already there. So that means we can actually go and add some extra noise to it. Um, we can also raise it up in height and, and now we're getting some extra height. So, I mean, that's good. We can, um, we can then play with the height of it there. So we could have, you know, a massive mountain or just quickly drop it down to something smaller and have a few different peaks in the distance. Um, we can change how it falls off as well. So um, here we're using a fall off angle to set the kind of shape of our mountain. We could adjust this angle down to something like 12 and now it's really soft and shallow, or we could crank it up to something like 65. And now we're getting something that's really dramatic. So that's one way we can control the shape. So that's the landscape tool. And we've now got this movable landscape going on in the background. And so we might want to go to our perspective view here and just hold down alt and we can drag out another one. And maybe we'll place this one more in the center. That's looking pretty good. So we've got these two mountains that are sort of interacting. We could do a third one as well. Um, just be careful with what you're selecting there because I was over one of the actual spline points. Um, so it didn't work when I wanted to drag it. So just make sure you're either selecting it on the side here or in the layer blueprints. Um, and so we'll grab another one and maybe drag it off to the side here. Um, you know what? I'm going to delete that one because I think it looks a bit too formulaic. So we'll just stick with the two there. So that's looking good. We've got a few different viewpoints. Um, you can see that the mountains themselves interact pretty nicely. Um, and if we wanted to, we could then come back in with our noise tool and we can just start painting in a bit of noise onto these um, just to break up those faces and shapes a little bit more. And I'm going to just sculpt up in between them. Not that we'll be able to see it from here. So that's looking pretty good already. We've got our basic terrain and then we've also got these land masses that we can move around. The next thing we want to do is bring in this source of water. Um, and, you know, if we wanted this exact look with these kind of edges, we probably have to use a texture and paint that on um, or use like some sort of custom mesh or material to do that. Ours won't look quite that nice, um, but we can, I can show you how to set up the sort of larger water system, which is actually much more multi-purpose than just a texture. So we've already, um, as with the landscape, we've already imported the water. So we've gone into our plugins and we've imported the water plugin. So now all we need to do is actually add it in. So I'm going to go back to selection mode here and we're going to come up to our trusty add actor button and we're going to search for water. And there's a few different types of water bodies we can use. So we can have oceans, which kind of expand the entire map. And so if you get down to a certain level, you're at like ocean depth. Um, you've got rivers, which work similar to the mountains and you kind of use a spline to connect them up. And then you've got lakes as well. Um, and then if you've got a water body, like an ocean, you actually need to specify where the islands are. Otherwise it'll wipe out your terrain. Um, so we're going to just start with a lake today and we'll just do a small one. So I'm going to drop in a lake and you can see we've got this big water volume that's now appeared and this is going to start loading up. And we now have beautiful turquoise water. Um, and Interestingly, our like water height is really high over here. So we might just need to drop that down to zero. 
Oh, I'm not sure how I set, uh, how I fixed that in the past. Let me just have a quick look. Okay, bizarrely, it looks like it just sort of fixed itself. Um, I really didn't touch anything. I just clicked on my lake and it just popped the water down. So I guess it has a bit of a detection phase and it finds like the height of your terrain. Um, so that's interesting. I did actually change the location down to a zero. So maybe that's what happened, but it looked like it just kind of did it itself. So yeah, now we've got this lake here and um, we can move it around and you can see it's deforming our terrain in the same way our landmass was. And it's almost set up identically. So we've got these different splines that we can grab and drag and we can play with the shape of that one. Uh, interestingly, the spline tool is working fine for the lake. Um, so that's fun. But we can start shaping that out how we want. Um, so in our reference image, we've got this little bit cutting in. So that's more of a puddle, but whatever, we'll, we'll put a lake there. Um, so I might grab our lake and just make a sort of sharper channel coming out of it. Cool. So I'm pretty happy with that positioning. If I check my perspective, that's looking quite nice. We've got a bit of the lake coming in here. Um, now what you might not want is for it to kind of change your landscape this much. It looks really sort of fake the way it's like flattening out around the lake. Um, so what we can do is start adjusting some of those properties. Um, one is the attenuation height, which is almost like the scale of the waves here. So I think that's too low of a value because it looks too big. So we'll just increase that. And now I've got a little bit smaller waves. We could maybe do that again. Um, although if we're doing so, we're also increasing the resolution of our water. So just keep that in mind, but that looks pretty good to me. Um, and then we can also change how it's affecting the landscape. So if we go to, okay, so I found the setting, it's right at the top. So um, underneath our water body lake, if we hit all and then come down to the terrain settings here, um, we can expose a few different things here, but one is the blend mode. So similar to our mountain before, um, and we can change that to additive and this one works a bit nicer. So it just kind of places the lake down, um, rather than flattening out the landscape. And so what we can do is drop that down to a height. Um, that looks a bit more reasonable, but yeah, you might find that certain, um, certain settings will look better depending on how you actually shaped things. So here that's looking quite nice, but I'm getting this weird sort of waterfall effect on this side. So what I might need to do is come back to my landscape tool and just grab a flatten brush and I'm going to turn the strength and the size down quite a bit. And um, what we'll do is we'll just sample this area and then we'll flatten out all in here to kind of cover up that waterfall. Maybe I could have used the bridge tool. Okay. So that's looking good to me. It looks a bit more natural in the way it's blending. Um, now, one cool thing about the water is it like automatically has a post effect. So when you go in here, you've already got like a screen tint and this nice like water ref reflection. Um, but we probably don't want like hyper blue water. We probably want something that looks a bit not as um, <laughs> tropical paradise. So. To adjust the actual material of that water, we just select our water body here and we'll go to our rendering tab. And there's a few different materials that make up our lake. Um, so the master one is this one, water material. And if we hit this button here, we can open up the material instance. And I'm just going to create a new material instance and just call it John Gerard 
water. We'll open that guy up. And we will assign that water material so we can see what we're doing. So John Gerard water. Um, and we can start playing with some of these settings. Uh, there's a lot of complexity in the water setup here, but the main one we can change is just our absorption. Um, so if we click this wheel here, we can start changing that color to something that's a little bit more pleasing. So I might do something like this that's still got a little bit of blue and that'll make much more sense when there's other materials around. Um, we could maybe darken things. Um, interestingly, that kind of reset everything. So I might, oh, there we go. It's a little bit buggy. Um, so maybe we'll go with something like that. And then we've also got another color in here, which is scattering. So it's a bit hard to see, but it's kind of the way it scatters the light. So you can make some interesting looking water here um, by doing that. But maybe I'll just do like a green sort of color. We've got like a crystal pool. Um, so that looks pretty good. And now what we might want to do is think about in the context of this environment, and although this probably doesn't matter for what we're doing now, um, where does this water come from? It might come from like a river. So we could set up another water system and those will actually blend really nicely together. So what we could do is come in here and search for a river, choose a water body river. And it works in much the same way as the um, the lake does, we'll just need to fix up the situation with the textures. So what I'm going to do is drop this down here and you can see how the water kind of automatically blends itself into the lake. And if these two colors match, you'd be able to see that, but we've got this like river sort of flowing this way. Um, we might be able to lift it up and have the water flow the other way, or well, that might be a material thing, not to worry. Um, and so now we can do use the same sort of tool to change the spline path of our river itself. So we might have it kind of come around this corner um, and then it might come from a bit higher up. Let me just undo that last step. And so we can start shaping out that water. So maybe it starts a bit higher here and it's coming down the hill. I'm just making sure everything's even. Um, and then same as before, we can hold alt and we can create some extra points. So maybe something like this, we can maybe have it kind of wrap around here. So maybe it comes from over here and then wraps around the mountain like this. And I think our scale is all a bit out of whack, um, but for the purpose of this, it's okay because it looks a bit too big. So something like that I'm pretty happy with. So we've got our water channel coming up through here and ending behind the mountain here. Um, and then just to get the actual material to match, we'll select our river and we'll go to our rendering tab again um, and we'll just select our water material. Be sure to set that as the John Gerard. Um, and then there is a different one for the river to lake transition. I'm not sure if we set this the same, what that will look like. Let's give it a go. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. Um, so maybe that's fine. We can do that. Alternatively, you could go and duplicate the material that was there and then um, adjust the color again. All right, so we've now got 
a river and a lake running through our scene. We've got these nice terrain and then mountains. And the nice thing about all of that at this stage is nothing is like hard baked in. We don't have to always go and repaint all the time. If I decided that I wanted this mountain to move over a little bit, I could just come and grab that landscape and shift it over. And you can see like where the river's position is doesn't really change. And maybe, oh yeah, see that? That looks kind of more interesting now. Um, we've got like a break in the mountain where we didn't before. So having these tools be quite iterative and flexible as you work is really, really important. So I'm back, I just had a quick break. Um, I think if you're following on at home, this is also a good time for a quick break because you've probably done a lot of setup and now the more painting fun begins. Um, so we've got our landscape. We've created some sort of hills and terrain around us. Um, and we've also created this river that comes up through these two mountains. The next step is to actually give this area some material. So we're not just looking at like a gray, horrible grid. Um, so what we're going to do is head on back into our trusty Quixel assets um, and pull in some assets for us to play with today. So we'll open up our Quixel content. So I've just searched for Forest Path and the Forest Path collections come up. Um, now what we'll do is grab some of these. Go ahead and download all of them basically. I think I won't use these small rocks and these twigs. We'll just stick to these kind of core ones here. So now that we've got our materials imported, um, there's a few ways we could add these onto our terrain. So, I mean, the really dead simple way is to go to our actual landscape here. And then, um, I don't know why my details panel is not coming up. There we go. Um, we could come over to our landscape here and go to our rendering tab. Nope. Our landscape material here. Um, and then we could like just search for our soil, for example, and pick that. And that does work, but um, we don't have any sort of controllability over that. It's just kind of plopped it down everywhere. And um, if we went to go to paint, um, there's no way to like add in other layers here. So what we have to do is actually set up a landscape material, which has got different layers inside it, similar to how we set up our barrel material last week with like different sub materials under the one group. Um, so we need to do that for our landscape and then assign it. And then we can start painting in those different areas. So I'm going to just undo what we did here and get rid of that. Um, and we'll create a new material. So we'll go to our content and materials tab, which we don't have. So we'll make the materials folder and enter that one and set up a new material here and we'll call it landscape mat for lack of a better name. Um, and we should probably use the naming convention and have M underscore the start. Okay, so we'll open that one up um, and I'll show you essentially how this works and then we'll import one that I've already kind of set up um, and I've made available as a resource for you. So what we can do is um, come over here and tick use material attributes. So that's kind of part one already done. Um, and then we can grab a landscape layer blend and we can add two objects to the array. And so we can give them a name. So we can say like, um, what are our two different ones? Pine needles and then dirt and then sort of other dirt. So pine needles and then dirt, sure. So we'll say layer one is pine, layer two is soil. And then what we need to do is give this some 
um, give this some um, set material attributes nodes. So we can plug this layer blend into our landscape material, and then we're going to put in our different uh, materials into these layers. So we'll grab our three maps for our soil or our pine. Um, and we'll just organize those a little bit. Um, and we'll do the same for our soil dirt. So we'll grab those three. And we will lay everything out like this. Um, and then what we need to grab is another set material attributes node. And remember these are like sub materials. Um, and so we need to add in the channels that we've got. So we'll add in three channels, base color. We've got a normal and a roughness map. Um, now this is actually like a packed data map. And I believe the green channel in this one is going to be our roughness. So we're just going to grab the green, not the full RGB. Um, but we'll grab the full RGB of the normal and the base color. And then we'll inject that into our pine layer. And we'll just do the same down here. So let's do that. Clear. Um, there I kind of stacked everything using the shift WASD keys, by the way. All right, so let's grab those. Just make sure everything's organized here. And we'll hook those up to so base color, normal, and then our roughness, which is a green channel. And that just depends on how that texture is packed by the way. So it won't always be green, but the quixel ones are. Um, and we'll drop that into our layer soil. And so with these materials, I believe we can't, like we can, we can preview the different nodes where we don't see anything normally. So this is what our like pine needles is looking like. And this is what our soil is looking like. Um, and now we can save that, we can stop previewing. And I'm just going to dock this up here. And we can um, now grab our new material and set that to be the landscape material. So it's here called landscape mat. Um, the drag and drop does not like us, so we'll just search for it. And hook that up. And you'll see immediately the first layer it should be the one that kind of populates. Um, and so it's just taking a sec here to cache. I don't know if I've done something wrong. And so we need to also come through and add in these layer weights. So um, just on your different layers, which you can see have popped in now, you just hit this plus button and press weighted blend layer um, and just choose a place to save the data for that layer. So I'm going to save it in the materials folder. You can see these are the layer pieces of data. Um, and so now we've got our first layer here painted over everything. Um, and then we've got a second layer. So we can actually click on that layer and making sure that we've got our ground selected in our landscape, not our water. Um, and then we can start painting that in. And these brushes work in the same way our actual like other landscape brushes do. So if we wanted to have this soil around the lake, for example, we could do that. And you can see that's blending in. So that looks pretty nice. And we could start you know, doing that. Um, but before we do that, I want to show you one resource, which is essentially a graph like this that I've already configured. Um, so you can use it for your own projects if you like. Um, and it's also fixes this tiling issue here because you can see that this is tiling quite small and we don't really have any control of that at the moment. Um, so 
I'll show you a website, which is called the Epic Developer Community. And on the Epic Developer Community, there's an amazing page called Snippets. And in Snippets, you can browse different people's blueprints and just copy them directly into your project. So here we've got someone who's saying like isolate UVs between zero and one. This is how they did it, right? And you can actually just press copy and then go into Unreal and just like press paste. And now I've got that blueprint in here. So I've created one for this tutorial. So if you come back um, to, if you visit the Canvas page, you'll be able to download that document. Um, it should be all public for you, but I'm just gonna grab it here. And we'll say copy full snippet. And I'm gonna come back to Unreal here and just delete what I did. So we'll select all, press delete, hook that one up and We'll plug in the landscape here. So this one's a little bit more complex. We've got one thing here, which is the landscape coordinates. And this mapping scale is the scale of the tiling of our textures. Um, and you can see that's going into these like three texture channels that we've got. And, um, our first channel has also got like a random noise on it. So we're going to take out the texture and we're going to give it some noise um, in the roughness and also like a tint value too. Um, and that's all happening here with this like global noise texture. And then we're blending that in to the first layer. Um, the second layer is just a standard texture. And so if you did want to add more layers, you could do that by just easily hitting plus here and then like copying all this, adding in a third one. Um, but how I've set it up is it should be quite user-friendly. So if we come back to our selection mode again here and everything's looking a bit broken, that's okay. Um, we'll go to our materials and we'll right click and we'll say create a material instance. And we'll say that this is the landscape mat for the J Gerard. And if we open up that instance, we now have this like setting, which is looking for all these different layers. So what we can do is just plug in those values that we've set up. Um, so if I can open up the content drawer here and go to my pine needles, I can just connect these up like this. Okay, let's see how that goes. Um, and then our landscape, we just need to pick that new one, so the J Gerard version, and we'll come back to landscape mode and we will set up the weighted blend layers for these. Now it looks like the material's not actually coming through. Um, let me just go back into our material instance. I noticed here it was sort of freaking out. Um, what we might need to do is just browse for it here specifically. Oh, okay. Sampler requires a virtual texture. So what's happening here is the way I set this up was using virtual textures. Um, so what that means is like, if we go back to our graph, which is somewhere, somewhere here, um, these Samplers are virtual texture samplers. See, you'll notice the VT here. So we could redo that or we could just turn on virtual textures. So I'm gonna to go to my project set settings and search for virtual textures. And so this just allows GPU texture virtualization. Um, unfortunately, we'll have to restart 
as well. So I'm going to just do a quick save all. Um, and then we'll restart our client. Okay, now that we've restarted, we just need to select all of our textures here and convert them into virtual textures. So we'll do that quickly. Um, whoa, having a bit of a freak out. These were 4K textures. So we'll choose 4K. Okay, we'll do the same for our soil dirt. Actually, those have just updated automatically, so that's looking good. Um, and now it's saying the landscape physical material needs to be rebuilt. Um, so I'm going to say build all landscapes. Do that. And then we'll say build virtual textures. Okay, let's see if it'll let us set that up now. So that's looking good. Um, now maybe our landscape just needs some attention. Let's have a look. Go to paint. Okay, that was a lot of faff. Um, so that may or may not have been worth it. Um, so I think I'll just add a disclaimer at the start of the video to also enable virtual textures in the settings. But if you didn't do it, then I've just went through the process of um, enabling it for the project and then coming in here and right clicking and saying rebuild materials. And then that's fixed that. Um, okay, so we're sort of back where we were before and maybe what we'll do is we'll just start painting in a bit of variation here. So I might make around the um, lake here more of like a standard soil. And again, we can create, change our brushes by using our brackets here and reshape everything. Um, so that, that might be what we want to do, but then maybe at the top here, it's okay to just have that all be this one material. So we could do that. Um, I think we could paint in some more patchy soil so we could add some noise here and um, just increase the size of our brush a bit and just go through and I'm going to just turn that way down and just add in a little bit of noise everywhere just to break up the ground coverage a bit. And you'll notice there's um, sort of dark and wet spots that are quite subtle in our first layer just by itself. Um, and we can crank those up by going to our landscape material instance and just changing the tint color. So we can tint it like a bit of a darker color, for example, save that out. And that should update in a sec. We might have to rebuild again. So you can see that. Maybe if I increase the, the contrast here, you'll see what I'm talking about. So there's, there's our noise happening all on our first layer. And you can see the darker areas are also got this sort of wet color, a uh, wet roughness. So that means that they look like puddles. Um, and that's just to give us a little bit of more, like a, li a little bit more inbuilt variation, um, which is nice to have. So I think that's looking good. Um, we can look at our scaling now as well and see if it's nice. I think it looks not too bad. We might want to make it a little bit bigger so we could go to our landscape master material here and adjust this value. 
So if we click in our landscape chords, we could change that to like four, maybe. Let's just go with that. Let's see if that looks any better. Try one more. Go to five. Yeah, not looking too bad there. I think the scale up close certainly looks more correct and it's not looking as tiled, so that's good. Um, and I think just sort of blending out a little bit more noise into these areas will be good for us. Okay, so we've done some texturing. Um, feel free to build the map how I did or just copy the one that I made. Remembering you'll have to turn on virtual texturing or just replace these with the texture channels in the map itself. Um, and we've got kind of like a painted environment now. Um, so I think we can start layering in some trees and other, other foliage. So what we're going to do is head over to our foliage tool. And in the foliage tool, we can actually add in anything we want. It doesn't necessarily have to be a piece of foliage, like a tree or some grass. It can be really any object. So to add, for example, this granite rock, we could drag that in drop it in and um, I'll just do the same for the log and the stump. So you can probably see straight away um, in this panel we've got like it's interesting we've got like a selection mode and then we've also got ticks for the things that we're going to start painting. So with these three are ticked at the moment if I click I'm going to just paint in a bunch of those objects so that's nice. Um, but we've got a lot of variables we can control here. So I'm going to untick these and just focus on these rocks for the moment. And we'll slow our camera down a bit. Um, so the first or probably most important painting option is the density here. So it's set to 100. So 100 objects per kilometer in Unreal space. So we probably want to drop that down to something like two and then maybe we're just painting in a couple of these around um, and it's a bit more controllable so we don't end up with like a thousand instances. Um, we can control the size of our brush up here so it uses the same like brackets um, control system as our regular brush for our landscape painting and we can also control how these are placed down. So um, I might switch to the log here for the example. So this log, and you can see there I was painting rock still, so I need to untick that, tick the log. So this log, for example, has got like a really flat base and when it's small like this, it's not too bad. Um, but if we go ahead and scale this up, so we say like scale two to three, for example, um, you might get positions where the log kind of sticks out of the ground. Um, of course, when I say that, it's just not happening to me. Maybe over here. Oh, it's not too bad. Um, but we can control that by these settings here. So we, we can have a Z offset, which will make it kind of stick in or above the ground. Um, so... Yeah, here you can see it's pretty subtle, but it's sticking out of the ground a little bit. So we might want to add in a negative Z offset. And that way we just know that everything's going to be under the ground a little bit more. So you can see that dirt texture from before is now not showing and it's just sort of sticking up. Um, so that's nice. And we can hold shift, by the way, to just erase or just erase all these logs that we've added. Um, and the other one is our average normal. So that just improves instead of like grabbing the exact point where we click with our mouse and sampling that normal, it'll like average the radius that we're selecting and paint in that way. Um, so that already looks a bit nicer. Um, one thing we can do as well is change what surfaces we draw on. So if we go to this mountain over here and paint up here, you can see there's nothing happening, but down here we can paint. 
Um, and it's because of this variable here, ground slope angle. So we might need to adjust that to like 90 degrees and now we can paint on 90 degree surfaces up there. So that's quite nice. Um, coming back over to this area here. So what I might want to do is scale these up a little bit and just start placing things around. So we might, um, we'll go to our set perspective here and just place in some rocks. So these I'll have to increase the scale. So let's say maybe three to 3.5. Um, and so that's like a random range and we'll have these stick in the ground a little bit better. Um, so maybe we'll have like, couple of rocks here, maybe some here, and we'll just, you know, scatter a few around our environment. Maybe we can have like a quarry here and some more sticking out. Um, and you can affect the way that these sort of rotate randomly as well. So that, that can be all here. You can pitch them a little bit. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of control. I don't think we need to go into all of it. You can figure that out as you go. So that's looking good. So maybe we'll have some logs now and I might want to paint both types of logs at once. So I can select two. Um, and then obviously that density is too high again. So we'll drop that down to something like five. Increase our scale again. So we'll go two, two, three, and we can layer those up. So I have a few here. Our Z index is messed up again, so we'll change that. That's looking a bit better. Put some in the foreground here. Um, something like that. Maybe there's like, a patch on this hill that used to be there that have <laughs> gotten killed and same over here. Um, although those you can see are sticking out of the grounds pretty badly. So we might need to even increase that further to something like negative 10. See how we go with that. It's looking good. And um, just because I'm working with a fixed perspective here, I'm trying to minimize the amount of assets that are falling out of those bounds. And so we'll scatter some things around here. Um, next, we might want to put in some actual foliage, some trees and bushes. So we've got these like 3D dead leaves. Um, so I think these are going to be good for like just the ground cover close to us. And oh, these ones are messed up as well um, from the Quixel import. So don't worry about that. Can't be bothered. Um, so I might just remove those then. And we'll plug in the trees as well. So um, remember I downloaded a pack of trees here, the MAE Oak Forest. Um, I've just discovered that these don't work with Nanite. So you just have to use them with their regular billboarding textures whereas the mega scans trees do. So um, I'm just gonna use these for now, but you can use the others and switch on Nanite as you want. So I'm gonna grab a few of these trees and drop them in here as well. So with our trees in the panel here, now we can start painting out some of those. Um, so I'm going to shift click these and just go through and make sure my values are dialed in. So we'll go for a density of five and make sure our Z offset is in the ground a decent amount. Um, and we'll overage a line, increase this guy a little bit. Um, now, good practice with trees is they're usually quite resource intensive. So I prefer to have less trees, but more of them. Uh, sorry, <laughs> less trees, but more of them. Less trees, but um, larger scale trees so that you've got still nice like coverage, but you're not making as many draw calls to your, C uh, to your GPU by hitting it with heaps of different mesh renders. Um, so that's good practice. Let's just see what the sort of scale we're looking at is. 
So these are pretty big already. So I think we'll be okay with just leaving that as is. Um, but you can see it's really dense. So I'm gonna go through and drop that value down to maybe something like 2.5. And then we'll start painting out some trees. So I'm gonna cover that hill there. Um, and I might also just kind of almost fully cover the mountain. Um, and then we can use shift click to kind of get pockets of that coverage back. Um, cause I just want to make sure that we can see the kind of river winding through there as well. So that's looking pretty good. We might reduce some of these in the foreground as much and just add in some more that are kind of distance. And we'll cover that bank back there. And so um, we are getting this like billboarding effect. So if you don't know what billboarding means, it's like um, at different distances, we're getting different versions of the trees popping in. And so the detail improves as we get closer and further away. Um, so that is happening and that's why in the distance they don't look quite as nice. Um, but I think we can work with something like that. Maybe we'll just scatter a few more in here so it doesn't feel so empty. Um, so yeah, we'll pop through a couple here and I might also just add some more of these textures here, uh, these models. And uh, I'm just gonna use these to kind of fill out some of this void space here so it doesn't look so, yeah, empty. So that's looking pretty good. Um, now we could, keep going with this and go in and add some grass and, and download that. But I think we'll stick with just the trees for now um, and just make sure we've got good coverage there. So that's looking pretty good to me. Something like that. Maybe we'll bring some more at the top of the mountain here. So one thing we haven't done at all is adjust our lighting and that really will change a lot of the way this environment looks. So um, we can do that by holding down control L again and changing those lighting settings. So we might just get something where we're seeing a lot of kind of contrast coming through. So just fiddling with these. Um, some lighting. Let's see, I want to get like lots of nice shadow detail coming in. And um, I do like this warmer light that you get in the evening as well. So that's looking pretty good to me. Um, if we wanted to, we could go and just sort of mess with those lights ourselves a bit more. In detail so we can go to our directional light and actually just warm it up um, and we, so we can do that just here by dragging this into the warmer zone um, being careful not to make it look too unrealistic so something like that might look good um, and we could also play with the intensity here so increasing and decreasing that one um, but I think where it is at the moment is okay. Um, another change we might want to make is going into our exponential height fog here and just turning on our volumetric fog. Here, so I just search for volumetric on the exponential height fog. We'll tick that on and you'll see the difference immediately. So we're getting that fog scattering and, and light coming through there. Um, we might want to then play with our lighting again, just to dial that in a bit. Um, so maybe we want some light shafts coming through, something like that. Well, over here, so we've got a bit of a light reflection on the lake, looks pretty nice. But then we're not getting many of the shafts coming across. So yeah, it's always a kind of a balancing act. 
Um, that is looking quite nice to me. And then we can also try and get a bit more of that, um, like, sort of god ray look coming through by adjusting the scattering of our lighting here. So um, we could come in and... If I can find my... Oh, I'm on the wrong volume. That's why that's not working. Exponential height fog. Here we go. Um, so we've got this scattering distribution as well. Um, so we can adjust that to affect how the light is being scattered through the scene. So something that's a bit more hazy looks quite nice here. I might also bring in some post effects quickly and um, I'll show you more how to do that in following weeks. But um, just as a quick overview, we'll add in a post processing volume. And we will just come and find a setting called extent, infinite extent, and we'll tick that. And that means that it's going to affect our entire scene, not just if we're inside this box. Um, and then we can start playing with those. Um, so really what I'm interested in is actually basically just the exposure. Um, so we can turn on this exposure override value and just bring down our exposure a little bit. Um, so just get a more balanced image. So something like that to be a little brighter. Whoa, this gets out of hand pretty quick. So let's go with maybe 0.5. So that's looking good. We've dialed that in a bit. Um, we could go ahead and add our bloom in because you don't have a game without bloom. Um, so turn up that one and change our threshold as well. So that's just picking how bright it needs to be to actually bloom, which you can, if we crank that up, you can see how that's working. And we'll drop that back down to something like two. Um, as well as like, we've got some basic sort of contrast and color grading settings here. So we could, increase the contrast of our scene just a touch as well without making it too kind of gaudy. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how this is looking now. We've got a few different perspectives we can view this environment for. So this is like a nice low perspective, but this is kind of how we've been designing from this shot here. Um, and, you know, we could go and keep tweaking it, but I think for this purpose, it's looking good already. Um, and then the last piece of our puzzle here is to get this kind of smoke effect going. Um, I actually don't want this billowing flag, though I'm sure you can do that. Um, I just, I'm just interested in this smoke effect. So that is our next thing to create. So for our smoke system, what we're going to need is called a Niagara system, which is like a GPU or CPU based particle system. Um, and it's definitely a little bit more advanced than how Unity's implementation works. Probably closer to Unity's visual effects graph. But the editor itself does look pretty different to the node-based editors we've been using so far. So there is a bit of a learning curve. Um, but we're going to just go for something quite simple today. And then um, if you want to make some more advanced particles, we can look at that later on in the SEM. Um, so what I'm going to do is set up our Niagara system. So all I need to do is right click in space and because I'm lazy, I'm just going to put this in the materials folder. And um, we've got a few options here as like a starting point for our system. So I'm going to choose new system from selected emitters. And we've got a few options here so we can use these to like start kicking off a system um, and there's there's heaps to look through. So we could also go to behavior systems and you can see like, oh, we can have particles that play audio and we can have mesh array particles. Um, so you can get into some pretty crazy stuff here. And I think this is one of the things that I want um, Chris from Epic to kind of take us through. It'd be really good. Um, but for today, we're going to go through something pretty simple. We're going to start with this fountain um, point for our system. So we're going to grab this fountain particle system 
and we're going to hit plus. Uh, you can see we can add like multiple of those as well, um, but I'm going to start with one and then we can duplicate it later. Okay, so we hit finish here and that's going to create a new Niagara system and we'll call it smoke flag and double click to open up that editor as we do and we'll drop that in here. Um, so straight away you'll see we've got this like spray of particles coming out and I'll just expand this to make it a little bit bigger. Um, so this is what we're working with to start. We're sort of firing some particles up in the air and they're falling down um, and we can see down here we've got a timeline for that animation so it has like a start um, and then it has like a full max length where the particles at this point die and then the loop begins again. Um, there and then up here we've got our sort of particle graph and there's a few different um, sections here. So the summary and the properties are just kind of like settings for the overall management of our system. Um, and so one of the first things we might want to do here is change from a CPU simulation to a GPU simulation. Um, and then we'll also have to change from a calculate bounds dynamic method to a fixed method. Um, and so basically switching from CPU to GPU here would just let us run a much more complex system with more particles. Um, and we're not going to be hitting the CPU. It's going to be driven from our GPU and be a bit better sort of accelerated. Um, and then we've got this other section here, which is the emitter update. Um, and so this controls what happens to our emitter, not the particles itself, but how they're emitted every frame as it updates. Um, and you can see we've got like a life cycle mode here and a loop duration, which is like the loop that you see here. Um, but I'm going to change this from a self cycle to a system cycle. And that's going to make it basically just loop forever when it's actually running in our system. So you can see now that it's just kind of going. And um, if you click on the top level of one of these sections, you kind of just get all of the parts, the components that make up that section below. So that's when I was adjusting that setting, it's actually this emitter state system setting here. Um, the next thing we can adjust is the spawn rate. And we can really crank this up because we've gone to a GPU particle. And I'm talking like 900, straight up. 900 particles a second. Um, so we can start cranking up that value to something, you know, until we get the, um, the look we're happy with. So even like 5,000, it's still running totally fine, but maybe we don't need that many. So we'll start with like a thousand particles. Um, the next section is our particle spawning section. And so this controls how our particles actually initially spawn in from the emitter. Um, and so we can change things here in the initialized particle, like the color. So we could, you know, make it like a red particle. Um, we could do like a red, white, and blue thing. I don't know. <laughs> um, be real patriotic. So for now, I'm going to leave that at, at white, um, but we can also change the lifetime of our particles here. So if I wanted them to live a bit longer, so we see them sort of fall for longer, we could do that there. Um, so you can see the shape here. And so right now we're actually using a, a sphere to kind of drive that. Um, and maybe we can see what that's doing by turning off our velocity there. And we could try cranking up our sphere radius. So these are kind of appearing on the surface of a sphere. Um, maybe if we do something like this. Yeah, so now we're kind of drawing a sphere almost and running these along the edges. Um, and that's how we're kind of drawing in these particles. So I'm going to undo those changes. So we're back with this. And I'm going to change this to a cone. Um, and so just so we get that more like conical plume shape. And I'm also going to start changing how this is offset. Um, so first, actually, we're going to go to this add velocity in a cone. So this is updated now to be in a cone because we changed our shape location. 
And instead of having our cone be in like an up Z axis, I'm going to have it fire to the side. So we'll just do like a, maybe a one in the X. So now we're firing everything up. And remember this is, um, where are we? This is kind of what we're trying to get, but with multiple like jets of smoke. So now we're firing off to the side um, and we might want to change the actual like way that's falling because we kind of want its smoke. So it should actually sort of rise up a little bit um, as it gets lighter. So what we're going to do is set this to be a positive value in our gravity. So we've gone down to a particle update and now we're changing how the particle moves after it has been emitted. So now we're sort of flowing out that way, but it looks very controlled. So what we might do is add in something called curl noise. And what this one's going to do as we turn this up is just change the way that, um, like it's just gonna add some sort of positional noise basically to the graph. Um, so we can change the frequency of that. I kind of want it to be lower, but stronger. So we'll do something like that. Um, and we also might want to apply some drag after that and just increase this value a bit. Oh, not too much. Let's see what we're getting there. And I've just also turned on this solve forces and velocity um, setting here. So now everything is moving a little bit slower and it's got this bit of noise. So it's kind of moving as it comes out and we can keep playing with those values here. So I might just drop the velocity in general, something like this. And now we're seeing that noise come through a little bit more. So you can see really now as I crank that up, that's going crazy. Um, so we'll bring that back in. And maybe I'll add a bit more of the velocity back just so we punch out a little bit further. So something like that is looking pretty good. It's sort of spewing out. We do have a kind of controlled shape and then it's spraying out with a bit of noise. So that's good. Um, the last thing we might do here, or well not the very last, but um, to kind of finish selling this look is um, changing the material. So we could obviously come and you know adjust our color. And, um, if we did that, we kind of get this like almost glowing particle look. Um, but I believe we've got a preset material here. So if I search up smoke, yeah, we've got a few here um, that we can use. So we've got this sub UV smoke and this one has got multiple different images inside it. So we just need to tell it how many. Um, and I just know by looking at this one, I believe it's an axis of eight by eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, I think that's correct. <laughs> Let's just try that and see. Um, so we'll put in eight by eight here. And yeah, so now every particle is actually like a little cloud of smoke. And I'm also just going to increase the size of our sprite here. So we've got like a minimum size and a max. And so now we're really sort of getting that smoky look happening. Um, and I wonder if we can recolor it. Yeah, so we can always recolor it just as easily. One thing to note though is um, black values sometimes in here don't actually show. Let's have a look. So, um, so what I'm going to do is drop in our smoke flag and just drop it straight into our scene and we'll bring it up a little bit. Um, oh, we're getting a bit of stuttering happening. That's okay. Yep. 
Yeah, so there we go. That's like our smoke plume. It's pretty responsive. Like we can move that around and update how that's looking. Um, and I might just rotate this as well so that we're facing the correct way. So that's looking pretty nice. Um, maybe we want to go a little bit darker. So I'll make that a bit slower. Yeah, so that looks good. Um, but now looking at it in the sort of real world, it looks like it's going a bit too quick. So I think what we should do is just drop down all of our, um, drop down all of our velocities here just to keep things kind of in check. Um, and maybe we don't need quite as many particles as well. Yeah, that still looks totally fine. So I'm pretty happy with that for the time being. Got a good shape. It is moving a little bit fast, but I think we can deal with that for now. Um, and what we'll do now is create our other plume. So what we can do is easily just duplicate that whole graph. So now we've got two actually overlapping each other. Um, and then we can just go to our shape location here and offset the shape here. So we'll say offset mode is default. Um, and then we can offset it in the Z axis. So maybe 50, maybe a hundred with this one. Maybe a little bit more so we see that separation. So that's looking good. Um, and then maybe we grab another plume here and do the same thing. So we go to our shape location, I set our offset mode to default and now I'll um, just times that value by two. There we go. So now we've got three, we hit save, and those are in our scene straight away, doing their thing. So now we might want to just place these a little bit closer to the camera. Um, and then I think the last thing we need to do is just add in a cylinder. So I'll do that now. Come in here and grab a cylinder object. position that one and this is like our flag um, pole <laughs> so we'll bring that up here like so Oops. And I'll just change the scale of this so it's quite thin. And I'm going to drop it underneath, uh, actually I'll drop the smoke flag underneath that one. So that we've just got one transparent layer for that. Um, and you can see that looks really good when it's in motion. Um, and then the last thing we'll do is just create a quick material for that flagpole. Um, and I'm simply going to create a color that is almost black. And we'll grab a roughness value that's kind of low, 0 0.2 maybe. Yep, looks good. Um, I might even want that to be a bit darker. Yeah, that looks good. Um, and then we'll assign that here. Okay. So I'm just going to tweak our camera a little bit and get a nicer uh, sort of shot here. Okay, so after a little bit more landscaping and just touching things up, this is kind of the final scene that we've got. So we've got our cool John Gerard inspired smoke plume flag happening here um, in our forest environment, which is, I mean, it's quite a bit more lush than <laughs> what you see here. Um, but we've also got so our water reflections happening on the side, um, some nice lighting. 
And yeah, I think it's been pretty successful. Um, and you know, we'll go through some more advanced techniques in the future, like how to make these assets really blend into the ground um, and start working with some more like smoke and fog. Um, but I think you should have all the tools you need to really start working on your landscapes and um, bring some environments to life. Uh, even sort of just simple ones with a bit of a concept like this one. Wow, that looks nice. Uh, and you'll notice that the the actual um, and you'll notice the Niagara system here as well as responding to our light really nicely. So we can create some really good looks with that light shining through. Um, and for your work, you might want to export some screenshots. So if we come up here, um, the last thing we might do is just export a high res screenshot and we can just up the res a little bit here. So I might do 2.5 times and we'll capture that. And now we've got a great screenshot for our folio here. Awesome. Well, everyone, I hope you learned a lot today um, about how to shape an environment and bring a scene to light. And we also touched on some Niagara systems here to build some simple particle effects. Um, and so, yeah, I hope you're all feeling kind of empowered to start going out and painting the landscape. Thanks.